This is Bob Oliphant from the Westford Historical Society and Museum bringing you episode 41 of the Westford Wardsman podcast. The Westford Wardsman newspaper was part of Turner's Public Spirit, a weekly newspaper in air a century ago. In this episode, we'll be reading the Wardsman for the week ending Saturday, October 10th, 1908. I will add commentary to elaborate on what was happening in Westford 114 years ago. The uh, October 10th issue begins with the About Town section. The 11th Representative District Convention, which met at AIR last Saturday afternoon, laid a business stone, with a capital S, foundation for representative. J. Adams Bartlett of Chelmsford called the meeting to order and kept order, and Huntley S. Turner of Ayr was the recorder of deeds exemplified. The reward of merit for preserving a solid name for namesake, for business sake, and for the fraternal spirit that has associated his life with the organized and unorganized social life of the community was bestowed upon Elisha D. Stone of Ayr in a right, bright, convincing style by ex-representative John M. Maloney of Ayr. Everybody seconded the acclamation introduced by Mr. Maloney, and the passage of this order will come up for a third reading before the voters in November, which will result in sending Mr. Stone to the State House for an indefinite term. Sounds like uh, Sam Taylor might have been at that meeting also. The 7th Senatorial District, which reaches from air to the Atlantic Ocean, will hold the Republican Convention to nominate a senator Saturday, October 10th at 1.30 at Reading. The delegates from Westford are Alfred W. Hartford and William R. Taylor. Reverend and Mrs. Benjamin H. Bailey, Mr. and Mrs. Abile J. Abbott, Mrs. George Drew, and Mrs. J. M. Fletcher attended the Conference of Unitarian Churches at Nashua last week Friday. John A. Taylor has completed the census of school children between the ages of 5 and 15 years. The record shows the total number to be 435 students. The next section is called Thieves. The horse thief element still continues to have self-constituted and unmolested rights in the southerly section of the town. And one of the new moon evenings last week, a horse belonging to Peter Scarms, S-C-A-R-M-S, at the Benjamin Fletcher place on the old Lowell Road was stolen. The horse was traced to Bill Ricca and from there toward Boston until the McAdam roadbed prevented the footprints of the horse being seen. Mr. Scarms considered the horse worth $250 and claims it is the third horse he has had stolen. The opportunity to carry on this business, as well as hen thieving, and the frequency of occurrence would seem to justify a severer form of punishment than being fed and clothed at the expense of the state in houses of correction, which frequently do not correct. A personal introduction to one of those electric chairs furnished by the state would be very likely to produce so long a sleep as to seriously interfere with their business. It is not less capital punishment society needs, but more capitalization. The next section is called Dance. The annual barn dance of the Westford Athletic Association and Harvest Supper was held at Town Hall last week Friday evening, and it proved to be a true, be true to name, an old-fashioned farm barn type affair with pumpkins and corn and red ears and merry-go-round as you please, together with the hoe, rake, scythe, and sickle. The victories of the Westford ball team were humorously designed and displayed the center of the hall, in the center of the hall. The artistic work of Miss Mary Balch. One of the pictures represented the Westford Athletic Association as a rooster with a wreath about his head. While lying on the ground were several other roosters, some dead, some in a battered condition, with the names of Groton, Shirley, Milford, and Townsend across their breasts. These pictures were true to life and correctly represented the strife. The costumes were of the old-fashioned bygone days, the rugged days of oxen and open fireplace, of popcorn and cider, of tallow candles and pine knots, the olden days of the district school with its independent individualism. 
Two prizes were offered for the costumes that best represented the old dried apple, hayseed days of the past. The prize for gentlemen was awarded to Albert W. Decatur, a toy rooster in a cage with card attached bearing the pertinent suggestion, hear us crow. The prize for ladies was awarded to Miss Mary Balch, a teddy bear with the words inscribed, our mascot. The association was presented a large squash, 10 cents to guess its weight. W.L. Woods secured the prize, a $2.50 umbrella. The correct weight was 62 and a half pounds. It was raised by J. Herbert Fletcher. Edward A. Hamlin had charge of the harvest supper and caterer F. A. Smith the ice cream. Hibbard's orchestra of Lowell furnished music for the feet movements, which were a merry-making affair with short dresses, long frocks, patched overalls, and heelless shoes. About $100 was left to the credit of the association. The next section is the Westford Center section. Probably every individual member of the Tadmont Club is arranging her plans so as to be present at the opening meeting Tuesday afternoon, October 13th. A program of real worth is being arranged. It is to be, ta quote, Tadmuck Day, end quote, and there will be several historic papers of our hilltop, which the Indians called Tadmuck Hill. The presence and punctuality of every member is desired. Annual dues, dues payable at this meeting to entitle the members to their membership tickets for the season. I think the dues at this time were something like a dollar or a dollar fifty a year. Principal and Mrs. Woodward, who have been trying to get settled in a home of their own since the beginning of the school term, have secured the Hugh Fletcher House on Boston Road, which is being renovated and repaired for their, their, for their occupancy. Uh, Mr. Woodward is the new principal at Westford Academy. Walter J. Merritt, who underwent a serious surgical operation at his home at Drew's Corner last week Tuesday, is resting comfortably and making good progress toward recovery. The operation was performed by Dr. Metcalf, Metcalf of Boston, assisted by Drs. Wells and Sherman of Westford. Can you imagine that uh, a doctor coming out from Boston today to perform an operation on somebody in their home? The writer of these items tries to be accurate and tactful as far as possible, oftentimes making much effort to verify some small item so that the reader may have a feeling of dependence upon the weekly chronicle and always regrets as much as anyone a mistaken statement. In the list of teachers returning to their work given last month, it was stated that Miss Mary Balch returned to South Hadley as instructor in drawing. Miss Balch did not return, but after 10 years of successful teaching there, decided to have a year with her parents at their pleasant home on the Boston Road. The Balches lived at 24 Boston Road. The Edward M. Abbott Hose Company had its monthly drill and tests of various hydrants Monday night, after which they assembled at the hose house and an oyster supper was served in charge of the two lieutenants, Edward M. Abbott and John H. Fletcher. The housewives of the town have been interested in the series of demonstrations at the town hall of various foods that have passed the pure food laws. The daily sessions have been very largely attended and much sensible instruction in the practical and necessary art of cooking has been given. The members of the WCTU, that's the Women's Christian Temperance Union, observed the 15th anniversary of their organization I believe that's their organization, their chapter in Westford. Wednesday afternoon of last week in the vestry of the Congregational Church at 3 o'clock. The vestry had been prettily trimmed with evergreen and the bright berries of the red alder and beautiful autumn flowers. Mrs. Ada S. Day, president of the union, introduce, introduced Miss, Mrs. Abby S. Rolfe, R-O-L-F-E, of Concord, president of the county union. Mrs. Rolfe was present at the organization 15 years ago and has always been a true and interested friend of this union. She addressed the members with her usual kindly common sense. Mrs. Alice Lambert, who has been an earnest member through all the years, gave a reminiscent talk. 
Mrs. Jeanette Wright and Mrs. Nora Col Colburn rendered some pleasing duets and Miss Olive Pine gave recitations. The next section is uh, the Graniteville section. The town workmen under Superintendent of Streets Angus McDonald have practically finished work on Broadway for the year and have left the street in very good condition considering the amount of money that was expended at this time. Next year, the entire job will be completed when it is expected that we will have a street that will be second to none in the town. The mills of the Abbott Worsted Company started up here on last Monday, uh, Monday morning on the full working schedule of 58 hours per week. The next section is the Forge Village section. A romance which began when both were students at Westford Academy ended last week, Wednesday, when Miss Laura Hindle of Chelmsford Center was married to William Charlton of Graniteville. I'm, I'm not sure they would have appreciated hearing that their romance had ended with their marriage. <laughs> Miss Hindle was a resident of this village for a number of years with her parents, Mr. and Mrs. Frank Hindle. Her father was superintendent of the Abbott Mill for over 25 years. Miss Hindle is a frequent visitor here. The couple are now enjoying their honeymoon in New York. Their many friends wish them much happiness in their wedded life. Thomas Fisher, with a party of friends from the Lowell High School, spent Wednesday at his cottage, the Birches, on the shores of Forge Pond. Uh, Tom Thomas Fisher was a member of the Westford Fisher family, a son of Alva, Alvin Fisher, and was the principal of Lowell High School. I'm not sure he was principal at this time. He may just have been a teacher there, but he became principal of, of Lowell High School. Elizabeth Splain has returned from a pleasant visit with her daughter, Mrs. Frank Rose of Belmont. Mrs. Elmer Nutting accompanied her. John Splain, son of Mrs. Mrs. Elizabeth Splain had an attack of heart trouble while performing his duties Monday morning, but is able to be out again. Mrs. Harriet M. Randall has received her annual invitation to attend the 30th annual reunion of Notre Dame Academy of Lowell, Saturday, October 17th. The carpenters are still at work on the new schoolhouse, uh, that is the Cameron School in, in, Grand, in uh, Forge Village. It is thought the building will be finished the latter part of November. At that time, the school children, under the direction of the teachers, will give a cantata, the proceeds of which will go toward a piano for the school. At the present time, the children are busy rehearsing for the cantata. No trace has been found of Edward Strang, who is believed to have broken into the home of John Cannell on the Littleton Road Saturday afternoon and taken a gold watch and other articles of jewelry. Edwin and Walter Woods of the steamer Ivernia were guests of Miss Rachel Cherry on Saturday. Edwin Cherry, head steward of the steamer Baltic, was unable to visit his sister this trip on account of the short stay of the vessel in the harbor. The Ivernia was a steamship built in 1899 for the Cunard Line. Uh, she would be sunk in the Mediterranean by a German torpedo in 1917 and the Baltic was a Royal Mail steamship built in 1904, uh, so it was fairly new four, four years ago, and operated by the White Star Line. Uh, both made regular stops in Boston, and as several times uh, it's mentioned that people who work on those ships visit relatives in Westford. And of course there were a lot of uh, English and Scottish people who came to Westford to work in the mills. Joseph Cannell has returned to his home after spending his vacation in Bethlehem, New Hampshire. The Sunday school in the Forge Mission House is held every Sunday afternoon at 3.30, conducted by H. H. Richards, a Groton master, and Hall Roosevelt, a sixth former of Groton School. Gracie Hall Roosevelt, born 1891 and died in 1941, was the youngest brother of First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt, uh, who was the wife of President Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Even song and sermon by the pastor at 4.30, annual parish meeting at Ayer on Monday, October 12th. I should mention that a number of Roosevelts graduated from the Groton School in, uh, in Groton, including President Franklin D. Roosevelt and his sons, as well as the sons of President Theodore Roosevelt. 
And that's the news in Westford for the week ending October 10th, 1908. Thank you for listening, and thanks to Nick Woodbury of Westford Cat for providing technical support. You can find transcriptions from the Wardsman at the Westford Historical Society's website at museum.westford.org or visit the Historical Society's Facebook page for more Westford news from a century ago. This is Bob Oliphant, and I hope you will join us for next week's Westford Wardsman podcast. Thank you.